to Cinema Wellman. I am your host, David, and happy World Cup Sunday. Today is the World Cup final, and on the pitch, they will be deciding the champion of the soccer world. While right here today in Cinema Wellman, we will be deciding the World Cup winner of the Cinematic World Cup. And I've got my sports reporter notes in front of me, and it would help if you had a bracket of the actual World Cup in front of you, because while I go through this and break it down... I am going to follow the groups and the process in which those crooked FIFA bastards laid out this year's tournament. So we're going to go group for group first in the group stage. Group A, advancing from Group A, we have the Netherlands and we have Ecuador. The Dutch relied on strengths such as the vanishing and the forgotten battle to advance. But you have to think it's only a matter of time before the human centipede brings them down. Joining the Dutch are Ecuador, home of the powerful Ratas Ratonas Rateros and Maria full of grace. Senegal and Qatar had no shot of advancing. On to group B, where we have the United States and England advancing. The U.S. on sheer volume alone, and the U.K. has always had a strong showing here on the Cinema Wellman pitch. Iran is home to one of my all-time favorite soccer films offside, but that wasn't enough to get them through, and Wales was never really a threat. Group C sees Mexico and Poland advancing. The Mexicans are in good recent form with the similars, which was an earlier favorite from this year, along with past successes of Moros Peros and Roma. Poland is an up-and-comer, led by director Pavel Pawlikowski, but that Roman Polanski stink may keep them from advancing any further in this tournament. Group C, Saudi Arabia and Argentina were no match for the Mexicans and the Poles. Group D had a couple of cinematic heavy hitters go through, with France and Australia both advancing. More on both as the tournament progresses. Denmark made a surprising run with the guilty and the celebration, but breaking the waves ultimately doomed them and prevented them from serious consideration. Tunisia had the man who sold his skin, which was amazing, but not enough to merit advancement. Group E was the group of death. Japan wins the group with Germany finishing second. Costa Rica was never a player, but it was a shame to leave out Spain. Great directors like Pedro Almodovar, just could not keep up with the Japanese and the Germans who survived the group of death. In the real-life World Cup, Group F's Croatia and Morocco made it to the semifinals. In the cinematic World Cup, Croatia and Morocco were left behind as the stronger Canadian and Belgian sides advanced to the round of 16. The total opposite of real life, but we're used to that here at Cinema Wellman. Group G was the weakest of the group groups. Cameroon and Serbia really didn't bring much to the table at all, so Brazil and Switzerland advanced. The Swiss barely made it through, even in this weak group. I don't see them lasting very long at all. Group H had a clear-cut winner in South Korea, who has carved out quite a nice cinematic niche in the recent past. Action is their game, and they play it well. Uruguay finishes second in the group by default, since Ghana and Portugal did very little to merit consideration. Uruguay will be toast in the round of 16, no matter who they face. Speaking of the round of 16, here we go. A reminder that we're following the same bracket as those FIFA criminal sons of bitches. So A1 plays B2, C1 plays D2, etc., etc., etc. Here is the round of 16. We have the Netherlands versus England. The Dutch never had a chance. As predicted, the human centipede led to their downfall. England was just too strong in this matchup. England advances. Next, Mexico versus Australia. This was closer than the pundits expected. Many thought the country, continent, that brought us the Mad Max series, Breaker Morant, Dead Calm, Triangle, and Stunt Rock would breeze through, but Mexico will advance on the strength of an amazing trio of directors, Alejandro Gonzalez Inaratu, Alfonso Cuaron, and Guillermo del Toro have been churning out award-winning films for almost 20 years. Their movies have won two Best Picture Oscars, and they have combined to win five Best Director Oscars, and that was too much for the Aussies to overcome. Mexico advances. Next, Japan versus Belgium. Kaiju and Kurosawa run rampant over Belgium a la Godzilla and route to the quarterfinals. Japan advances. Next, we have Brazil versus Uruguay. Brazil really doesn't have much going for them, but Uruguay has even less. This is a victory by almost default, and Brazil will not survive the quarters. Brazil advances. Next, 
the United States versus Ecuador. This was reminiscent of the Japan versus Belgium matchup. Once again, sheer volume sends the USA past a foe of much less stretched stature. Must much lesser stature. That's harder to say than you think. USA advances. Next, France versus Poland. Another prediction comes true as the Roman Polanski stench is the main reason Poland falls to France in this round. This was not even close. France advances. Next, Canada versus Germany. Yet another blowout as the Germans took an early lead in 1920. It'll take several generations for the Canadians to catch up. Germany advances. Next, South Korea versus Switzerland. The Swiss are good at a lot of things. Chocolate, cheese, Swiss army knives, funneling Nazi money through their banks, and cinema is not on that list. South Korea is a country to watch. They may, may make things tough for the Germans in the quarterfinals. South Korea advances. Now, we move on to the quarterfinals. Now that there are only eight teams remaining, I'm going to start the list with some notable films for each country for comparison purposes. And I'm also going to tell you the number of films that I have seen made by that country. All right, here's the first one in the quarterfinals. England, 445 versus Mexico, 17. For England, Sir Alfred Hitchcock, the 007 series, Descent, Ex Machina, Highlander, Lawrence of Arabia, Hot Fuzz, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, Man for All Season, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Against England, Ken Russell's Rubbish, Tom Jones, Highlander 2, The Quickening, and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, which may have more of a negative impact than some anticipate. For Mexico, trio of superstar directors, Inaratu, Cuaron, and Del Toro, Pan's Labyrinth, Amores Perros, El Mariachi, Roma, The Similars, The Shape of Water, Babel, Babel, sorry, against Mexico, nothing really. I've only seen 17 films and most of them were good. Here's the result. England advances. England was too much for the Mexicans, who I expect a solid showing from in 2026 when I do this again. You knew that was happening, right? You had to know that. I thought of this the other day at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> That's why you're getting this special episode. Next, Japan versus Brazil. Japan, 125, Brazil, 11. For Japan, Gojira, and all the kaiju movies, Akira Kurosawa, Ishiro Honda, Seven Samurai, Audition, Battle Royale, Dreams, Haosu, Spirited Away, Ron, Suicide Club, Against Japan, Son of Godzilla, and God Raga vs. King Oga. For Brazil, City of God, Wasteland, Against Brazil. The lady on the bus. That poor lady. Result, Japan advances. This was another stomping, a la the big guy going through Tokyo. Next, United States, 6,300 plus, versus France, 179. Now, I'm not going to list anything for the USA since probably most of the movies you've seen are from the United States and you've got all, you're familiar with what's great and what's awful. Um, there's a ton for, there's a ton against. Um, so fill in your own blanks. I'll help you with the other ones. For France, Jean-Luc Godard, Francois Truffaut, Jean-Pierre Melville, Tell No One, The Wages of Fear, Three Men to Kill, Leon, Rafifi, Band of Outsiders, Day for Night, Elevator to the Gallows, La Femme Nikita, Un Chien Andalou, Breathless, Against France, Last Tango in Paris. Get me the butter. Maurice Chevalier. Gerard Depardieu. Memoirs of a French whore. Belle de Jour. Their love of Jerry Lewis. Result, France advances on kicks. So that was that that took that was a tie after regulation. And we had extra time, and then we had extra extra time. So here's how it ended up on, on kicks. So I'm gonna give you the attempt and the result. All right. USA followed by France. USA taking the attempt. Citizen Kane, score. France, day for night, score. It's 1 1. USA, 
Forrest Gump, miss. France, love for Jerry Lewis, miss. Still 1-1. USA, Edith Head, score. France, Catherine Deneuve, miss. USA, the Cohen brothers, score. France, Rafifi, score. USA could win on this. Quentin Tarantino, miss. France, needs to score to, to, to bring it to extras. The wages of fear, score. USA, Casablanca, score. France, Jean-Luc Godard, score. USA, Thelma Ritter, score. France, Jean-Pierre Melville, score. Still tied up. This is like overtime, sudden death. USA, Kevin Costner. Miss. France could win it. Luis Buñuel and Salvador Dali, together. They brought them out together. Score. France advances on kicks. Next, Germany, 55, versus South Korea, 20. For Germany, the lives of others, Dust Boot, M, Nosferatu, Run Lola Run, The Way Things Go, The Blue Angel, The Counterfeiters, Prater, Downfall, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, A Film Unfinished, Against Germany, Three Penny Opera, Wild and Beautiful Honey Pizza, <laughs> or is that a four? That might be a four. I might have made a mistake there. Next, South Korea, four, Old Boy, Parasite, Snowpiercer, Train to Busan, The Villainous, The Host, Okja. Against South Korea, nothing from what I've seen is a negative about South Korean cinema. But the result, Germany advances. Too much history on the side of the Germans. You don't hear that too often. And South Korea will be back and will be, will be adding to an impressive roster. I know that over the next four years, they are going to be advancing, I think. Next, we have left the semifinals. We have England versus France. I'm sorry, England versus Japan and France versus Germany. Those are your final four. And we will start with England versus Japan. Now this, again, another stunning match, and this one needed to be decided by penalty kicks. So we'll start first with England, and I'll tell you the result, and then Japan and the result. England, Peter O'Toole, score. Japan, Son of Godzilla, miss. England, Tom Jones, miss. Japan, God Raja versus King Oja, miss. England, leading 1-0. England, Ken Russell, miss. Japan, Ishiro Honda, scores. It is 1-1. England, Sir Alfred Hitchcock, scores. Japan, audition, score. England, a man for all seasons, score. Japan, Gojira, score. England, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, score. Japan, Godzilla, score. Now, this caused a lot of controversy and, and, uh, and this was a problem because um, Godzilla took two consecutive kicks for Japan and he used two different names and his argument was that he had a 30-plus film franchise, so that should allow for more than one kick. And he was carded. The referee said, name, go, and book. And if you're going to start to talk to me about how Godzilla was not taking penalty kicks, then you're really not paying attention. So it's pretty much sudden death there. James Mason for England. Score. Seven Samurai for Japan. Score. The Cornetto Trilogy for England, score. Spirited Away for Japan, score. This is going to go on forever, you may be saying. Next, for England, Highlander 2, The Quickening, miss. Japan could win it. Battle Royale, miss. England, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang? Really? You're trotting them out? Miss! And Japan has ready to answer that Akira Kurosawa. Score, and Japan 
advances. Controversial match, but that's the way it happened. And the other of the semis, France versus Germany. Now, two of the oldest franchises in cinematic history met in an epic battle for supremacy with the spot, the finals in st at stake, and it did not disappoint. Germany's accomplishments include their expressionism period, which came out of the silent film era, pioneering filmmakers like Fritz Lang and F.W. Murnau, paved the way for German-born directors like Billy Wilder and William Wyler to plant the seeds of film noir in America. Unfortunately, the German film industry was turned into a propaganda machine by Goebbels and the Nazis during World War II. The film world is still waiting for them to return to pre-war form. France's cinematic history is cinema's cinematic history. The Lumiere brothers screened some of their first films for a crowd at the Salon Indien du Grand Café in Paris on December 28, 1895, and France has been a leader in cinema ever since. The Lumieres handed the torch to Georges Méliès and Louis Buñuel, who succeeded on an earlier penalty kick, uh, which led to Jean Renoir and Jean Cocteau, and the late 50s and early 60s saw the birth of the French New Wave movement, and movies of which the world had never seen before, headed by Francois Truffaut, Jean-Luc Godard, Jean-Pierre Melville, and Claude Chabrol, the new wave was the ultimate and cool. So, the result is that France advances. Which brings us to the final. It is Japan versus France. And this was a titanic battle of two worthy opponents who have been part of the cinematic landscape from the very beginning. France started it all in 1895 and Japan opened shop in 1899. Both rosters, chock full of pioneering directors, talented actors and actresses, new film techniques, the blending of genres, and so many groundbreaking movies. But the final result in one of the closest matches of the entire tournament, gotta give the nod to France. Congratulations to France, and we are already looking forward to 2026 when we'll do this all again right here in Cinema Wellman the next World Cup of Cinema will be held with 48 countries instead of 32. So buckle up for that one. And until then, take care and enjoy today's match.